<laughs> so uh, we've come up from Wales because we've got a particularly difficult problem there. We have a Welsh Labour government that actually is imposing uh, gender ideology on the whole of the population of Wales. They refuse to speak to the ordinary population, refuse to speak to women's groups, refuse to speak to the LGB Alliance, Cymru, of which I'm a member. And the problem is that they're imposing this on a nation. They've come up with an LGBTQ plus action plan, and in that the the, um, Minister for Wales, Mark Drakeford, the, the First Minister, has put the list of protected characteristics but he's left out sex so if you've no sex in the protected list of characteristics you can't protect women and girls spaces and you can't have same sex attraction and as a lesbian I find that really offensive because they're saying this action plan is to protect all people in Wales and to make it the 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 most progressive country in Europe but they refuse to take into consideration women, girls and LGB people. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense to me that um, LGB people would want to break off from the T because there doesn't seem to be much overlap in terms of what you have in common or you know the, 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 the issues that affect you. But a lot of people, especially online, commentators, left-wing progressives, will instantly say that the LGB alliance is a hate group. Yeah. What do you make of that kind of rhetoric? Well... I would like to have a definition of what TQ plus means. I've asked my Welsh Senate member what it means and what what is the plus. How can you protect a nation? How can you protect people's rights if you don't know who these people are? So I don't think it's hate speech. I think we need to be informed as to who these people are. And last thing I'll ask you as well, you, you would have seen the scenes in New Zealand uh, last week when some w- the women tried to congregate and talk about their rights and how yeah. violence ensued. Yeah. Do you feel it's, there's a risk to your safety now when you come out and speak in service of your rights? Yeah, I do. I do think it is. I think the, the, the aggression uh, is growing because um, the police perhaps aren't keeping these people far enough away from others who want to speak. Uh, because people's jobs are in danger, people are, are scared to speak up. And so it's only a small handful of people who can come out. But we're growing in number because we're getting more and more angry. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but it is, it's a, it's a, it's a valid uh, thing to be, to be a bit concerned because we've seen the violence. Absolutely. Oh, thank you very much for speaking to me and uh, stay safe as well. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much for speaking to me. Would you mind just telling me uh, a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so I'm the Laughing Auditor. I've got a YouTube channel um, and I go about sort of filming police stations and publicly funded publicly funded institutions stuff like that and sort of see how they're doing um, and I came across a trans protest a couple of weeks ago uh, a few people reached out told me there was an event today so I thought I'd come down with a camera and sort of see see how that trans movement sort of behave themselves see how the police react um, and yeah that's why I'm here well, the coverage that you got a couple of weeks ago went viral all over the internet. As soon as you told me about it moments ago, I knew exactly who you were and what it related to. So just explain to us exactly what happened a couple of weeks ago for you for your footage to go viral. Yeah, so I was in sort of the Bloomsbury area of London, um, and I just happened to come across what I thought was a street party, um, and it turned out to be a trans protest at a lesbian project meeting. Um, so I decided to get my camera out, do a bit of filming, and, and very quickly I was... Sort of surrounded by these trans protesters, um, I was hounded, I was assaulted, was verbally abused, um, and I went in there with the best intentions. You know, I, I, I was non-judgmental, didn't have really an issue with any trans movement at the time. Didn't so, I? have you never covered this issue before in any way? No, not at all. I normally stick to sort of police stations, stuff like that, sort of publicly funded places. Um, and as I say, I just happened to come across it and got my camera, out and it just went absolutely crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, how has that shaped your perception then of the whole debate? I mean, it's obviously termed, you know, gender critical people versus trans rights activists. What, you having that experience, you know, which side came across as more reasonable to you? Oh, definitely um, the, the, the people that were having the meeting, the lesbian project, if, it was, if I'm correct, if it was them. Um, I, I couldn't understand the reaction of the trans protesters, why they were acting, the way they were acting. Um, it was just completely unreasonable. You know, I'm not here to tell everyone with the same brush, but certainly after that event, it made me question sort of their motives, and particularly that group of people, I've got no time for them anymore. Um, And I'm going to stand to make sure that these people here are able to conduct um, their activity um, and do what they want to do, um, and make sure that the police are going to be held accountable if they try and sort of stop that from happening and allow these people to be abused the way that they've been getting, getting abused recently. All right, thanks for speaking to me. Good luck today yeah. and uh, stay safe. No problem. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Why is it so important for you to be here today at the uh, Reformers Train Speakers Corner? Uh, I think it's kind of important for men to start coming to these things because um, these the, the the kind of counter protesters are very brave when men are um, when men when women are here, but they're not so brave when men are here. It seems to it seems to kind of calm them a little bit. They seem to become a little bit more self conscious. So uh, you know, me, my friend Dave Cav uh, Dennis Kavanagh, he put out a call as well for men today and. You know, it's just it's just a, a civilizing thing. I also think that we should bring kids to these, because because the more civilized, the more normal we look, and the more we just think to, think of it as a nice day out, the worse the other side, the more embarrassed the other side will hopefully get. You know. Yeah, I mean, you've been someone who's covered the sort of violent response from the counter protesters right from the beginning. But yeah. It feels like we've seen somewhat of an escalation in the last year or so, especially in the last few weeks. Few weeks. Does that, yeah. Does that give you cause for concern coming out here? A little bit, but like you know, as I as I said, I think the police went from the. I, I actually managed to catch a video of the police walking away from uh, a bunch of women yeah, being I saw that. kettled. Yeah, and so since I'm really delighted that it, it's that and a lot of other reports had an effect, and and now they're they're taking it seriously. So if there weren't as many police here, I'd be worried. Yeah, but because it's such a strong presence. Yeah, I think it's going to be just nice, and I think that if there are any protesters, they're just going to be a sideshow, you know. All right, Graham, nice to see you. Thanks for speaking to me. Yeah, I, I don't think it. feel like it gave you a lot of insight, but I can, I can, you know, if if, uh, if there's anything I can do. Cool, <laughs> appreciate right. it. Cheers, Stephen. Speak to you later. Good to see you. whether this isn't part of some big plan to make us believe things that we yeah. see in front of us not to be true. Yeah. Yeah. And none of us believe, and maybe some of you used to, but none of us now believe that trans-identified people, people who pretend they're trans, people who pretend they're the opposite sex, are a vulnerable minority. A man sticking on a dress and leaving his house as a mockery and a parody of women is not a vulnerable human. Is at all. We know that in through government, most people don't believe this. Keir Starmer knows that women don't have penises. Uh, Rishi Sunak knows that it's absolutely wrong to sterilise children. And he also has the power to stop us teaching this crap in school, and yet every day is being taught. Which leads me into a nice segue 
That's why we started a political party called Party of Women that will stand for truth and demand that people answer questions that everyone, quite frankly, is too gutless to ask. So it will be, what is a woman? And Keir Starmer say, it's complicated. And I'll say, well, do women have penises, Keir? And I'll say, well, sometimes women have penises. And I'll say, which women have penises? And they'll have to say, the ones that are men. <laughs> we've run Let Women Speak for the last few years and it works. There is no hierarchy, there is no agenda. Anyone who sticks their hand up is welcome to speak. Vagina have us first. That's what we say. If you have a penis, you can wait at the back of the line. It might feel a little bit foreign to you. Uh, but that's, that's where we're going to put you. I'm just joking. Um, not really. So, uh, anyway, we prioritise women because we feel it's our voices that are being erased, it's our language that's being totally taken over, it's us that are pretending every day of the week that it's okay, you know, if we call menstruators because we're included. That is not inclusion. Every time we include men into the uh, definition of women, into the spaces of women, we definitely exclude many women. Yeah. So it's exclusionary yes. to include these men. It's nothing to do with inclusion. Let Women Speak is here at our home at Reformers Tree in the last Sunday of every month. Uh, all are welcome, uh, especially women, because for God's sake, if now is not the time to speak up, I have no idea when it might be. It's Easter, so I've brought my eggs. Uh, and so many eggs with us today. Uh, so, we've come here to say, no woman has a penis. No man has a vagina. Uh, Non-binary is nonsense. And transitioning children is profound abuse. I'm going to say it once, I'll say it twice. If you're not there, especially if you've got a penis. <laughs> I don't mean to be unkind. I love men very much. Uh, time and a place, so. Time and a place. Um, <laughs> Okay, where are you from? Myself. Okay, can you not tell women to get out of the way? Because then, yes. So women being, I've seen you twice. So women being here, right, are more important than men filming. Women being here is here. Uh, thanks very much for speaking to me today. Maybe you could just explain the uh, the meaning of your t-shirt here. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, the uh, first do no harm is uh, part of the Hippocratic Oath. Um, it's what doctors sign up to. Um, it's a duty, so it comes from the uh, branch of medical ethics called deontology, uh, the duty to do no harm. And it's uh, been... Um, uh, used in our campaign to help protect children against the harm of um, opposite sex imitation medicine, uh, which is uh, uh, the best, the better name for what other people will call gender affirming care. Okay, and just to get your opinion on something that's been uh, put around as a possible explanation for a long time, but it's, it's become somewhat of a taboo, and that's this idea of social contagion. We've seen a lot of younger people being referred, specifically young girls. Uh, do you give that much credence at all, this idea of social contagion? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Um, it's uh, only in the last couple of weeks that there has actually been a, a study produced um, uh, examining... Um, 
uh, Lisa Littman's uh, original the uh, hypothesis that it was a social contagion, uh, which she labelled rapid onset gender dysphoria. Um, it's a, a, a term that I wouldn't necessarily agree with because um, uh, the, the knowledge and experience we have now is that um, the onset tends to come after lengthy periods of rumination and um, the term gender dysphoria itself is a bit problematic uh, in that it's just a list of feelings so it's quite hard to use as a diagnostic tool. Uh, as I said the first scientific paper which backs up the hypothesis came out uh, a couple of weeks ago which was uh, written by Dr uh, Michael Biggs and a Susanna Diaz um, so you can look that up. Um, uh, we've also observed just through uh, working with families affected by this that um, uh, the, the children uh, get the idea that they are transgender in clusters and those clusters tend to be um, you know in, in areas so Brighton all the schools in Brighton are captured by uh, the ideology. They all have all sorts of youth going into them to tell uh, the staff that children can be transgender. And surprise, surprise, Brighton has a higher proportion of children identifying as transgender than, uh, say, other towns. And there are hotspots in Devon, there are hotspots in Norfolk, and there's hotspots in Blackpool. Um, and Blackpool's an interesting one because um, there is a disproportionately high number of children in care in the Blackpool area. So as well as being spread by social contagion, it is spread to children who are susceptible or vulnerable to believing themselves to be transgender. And of course, um, children in care are particularly vulnerable and particularly susceptible to other people coming along telling them that they love them and that they're wonderful. Okay, I got all that con you know, comprehensively answered my question. Thank you very much for your time, I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. Cheers. Alex, thank you very much for speaking to me. I, I, was, just, I was just telling, telling you, when I spotted you from a bit of a distance away and saw the rainbow flag, I, I assumed you was a counter-protester, so that, that's the perception many have of this flag now, so, so maybe you can talk about that. And that is something that uh, that is a, a bit of a sore point, well, that is quite a sore point for us original, you know, same-sex attracted people, that people say, uh, when I see a rainbow, I want to puke, uh, and no, it, it, they really do say it, but what they mean the, the progress flag, the uh, you know the mutilated one where they keep adding colors and circles and everything and it, it just hurts when you're a real LGB person because everybody's represented in this flag and uh, we need to reclaim it so what kind of reactions do you get when you turn it to events like this? Oh my god, uh, people have been taking pictures of me, uh, I saw two, two unknown people have t uh, uh, said uh, thank you for bringing that flag so I think the time is uh, my timing has been uh, right uh, Everybody wants a picture of it and is uh, uh, very, very happy to see it. People want to reclaim it. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Stay safe. No worries. Cheers. No worries.